Atoms and Radiation. Okay, just a reminder then about atomic structure. We covered this in Unit 1. Remember there are electrons with different energy levels arranged in shells, with two in the first shell and a maximum of eight in all subsequent shells. And in the centre of the atom we have the nucleus, which is where you'll find the protons and the neutrons. And if you remember, electrons have an electrical charge of minus one, protons plus one, and neutrons, no charge, they're neutral. And if you remember, the number of protons in an atom is always the same as the number of electrons. So the charges, therefore, cancel each other out, and the atom has no overall charge. If an atom gains or loses an electron, then it gains or loses a negative charge, and we call a charged particle an ion. So what is an isotope? Now some elements have atoms of different types, called isotopes. Now they all have the same number of protons and electrons, but the number of neutrons may vary. So this will affect the atomic mass, but not the charge. Now, why not? If you remember, neutrons have mass, but they don't have charge. So if you have an extra neutron, then you'll add one to the atom's atomic mass, but you don't affect the charge. It's got no charge. So this means that the atomic number is the same, because the atomic number is the number of protons and electrons, but the mass number will differ. So here's an example of two isotopes of carbon. There's carbon-12 and carbon-14. So the mass number, the top number there, called A. Now carbon-12 has six protons and six neutrons, so it has a mass of 12. But carbon-14 has six protons, that's the same, but two extra neutrons, eight neutrons. So it's got a mass of 14. Now the atomic number, which is called Z, this doesn't change because both forms have six protons and six electrons. So what do we mean by radiation? Now some substances emit radiation from their nuclei and they're described as radioactive. Now these emissions are random which means that the number of emissions may fluctuate over time and you can't predict them. But the key thing is that energy is released as the particle is emitted from the nucleus. So, as you have a radioactive nucleus emitting a particle, energy is released at the same time. Now, two very important scientists who discovered the nuclear structure of atoms were Rutherford and Marsden. Now, before their work, it was believed that atoms were like plum puddings. It was described as the plum pudding model, which basically meant that they thought there was a load of positively charged matter, which was evenly spread, with negatively charged electrons buried inside. Now, what Rutherford and Marsden did was they bombarded thin metal foil with alpha particles. We'll come on to those in a minute. And they were astonished to find that the vast majority of these alpha particles passed straight through the metal foil, but a tiny number bounced straight back at them. And they equated this to like firing cannonballs at tissue paper and having the odd one bouncing straight back at you. And they concluded from this that most of the mass of an atom is in the nucleus and that the nucleus is positively charged. So here's a representation of the plum pudding model, uh, a sea of positive charge with negative charges buried inside. And this represents Rutherford's findings, which was that the vast majority of alpha particles passed straight through a sheet of metal foil and a tiny proportion bounced straight back at them. So in an exam question, you might be asked to compare these two models of atomic structure, the first plum pudding model versus the nuclear model, which is what we now believe to be true. Now the nuclear model shows that the mass is concentrated at the centre of the atom, whereas in the plum pudding model the mass is evenly distributed.
In the nuclear model, the positive charge is concentrated at the centre of the atom, but in the plum pudding model, the positive charge is evenly distributed. In the nuclear model, electrons orbit some distance from the centre, whereas in the plum pudding model, the electrons are embedded in the positive charge. And in the nuclear model, the atom is mostly empty space, whereas in the plum pudding model, it's a solid mass with no empty space.